Hello guys and welcome back to comment and it's time for another tutorial and today we are going to create a GF image generator. You just saw what the end result is. Um, the reason we got that animation thing is because we need, we just want to show the player that it is, the system is doing something. Of course in the end you can just remove it and just keep track of all the positions where the walls need to be and in the end you will just add it. Also all the walls are just the exact same object and they're just rotated and of course you can just pick a random but in the end it doesn't work with that there are different um, pieces for uh, if there is an angle or whatever it's just with one piece um, anyway let's just start right click create c sharp script and call it the mesh generator okay so the way this works, and maybe you already saw it in the clip at just the start of this video, is that it will just um, go through a random direction from the start and it will just um, remove the wall between those two spots and it will just do that until it cannot go any way further. Uh, so it's spot, it's, uh, you cannot go to the left or the right because those positions are already taken. <laughs> So you go back towards the old position and you check, can it go from this position to any other position? So basically we just keep track of where have you been and to which side can you still go? Also, um, we just start this tutorial with just adding the, all the variables we need in the end. And also just with, um, with the very simple start, which is just creating the crit itself. Anyway, let's just start and we start with using unityengine.ue. The reason we do this is because we want to show the player that it is generating with its uh, text. Of course, you can make it nicer in your own game, but well, I still want to show you guys how to do this. Okay, so we start with a private list because we don't really need to access it within the inspector of, from other scripts. A private list of vector 2. So in the end this whole maze is actually a 2D maze and we just put it in a 3D space. In the end it doesn't really matter that much. If you want to create a 3D maze of it, it would just be a little bit more difficult. Anyway, we are going to call this old position. And it is going to be a new list, vector, three, vector 2, so we don't have any errors. This list is to keep track of all the vectors we just have been. So for example, um, you're going one forward, you just remember the other position. So we can just do that backtracking script. Then we got a public vector two, and that's the size. So the size is well very straightforward. We're just going to create a square, this maze, and we're just going to say, well, what is the uh, size of the X and what's the size of the I and well we can just use that. Then we got a serializable field but still a private so we can just change it within the inspector. And the re reason we do this as a serializable field is because we can just keep track if everything is going all right, if you've got an error or whatever. Um, this is a list of all the available positions. And it just means that we know um, which positions we still can add or we can still remove some walls from it so it's still closed. So a uh, available position and well during this tu whole tutorial series we are just once we're really going to use this um, I will just explain exactly what we need for but this is just a little bit simpler if we just add already all uh, the variables just now. Then we got a private list of all the game objects and of all the walls. So the reason we do this is just so we can remove them and we know uh, what we need to remove and which one. Um, of course, you can also make this instead of a game object, you can just make this as a factor tree and you just remember which uh, position it was and just in the end you just add it all. 
Again, we just do this so we can just show the player it's actually doing something. Then we cut a sizable field and a private game object while prefab. So this is just the prefab in the end you will just see. Of course, again, you can make a list of this and just pick a random one, but all the ones just need to be connected. Then we are going to have a private vector to current position. The reason we do this is we cannot do it all within one frame. Um, your computer cannot handle it, so we actually spread it out over a few frames. And we just need to keep track of which position are you currently at, and we can just put it back into the system and it will just go on. It will just do, for example, uh, 100 steps, and after that it will just uh, go towards the next frame. So this way we can just show it the player, but at the same time the computer doesn't have an, uh, can still handle it. Well, we use the current position, we can just put it back in the system and it will all work. But of course we need to know how many steps per frame can we do. So we're going to make this a little bit more fancy inside the inspector. So we've got a range and that basically means um, we've got a slider and we can just change it between 1 and 100. And we're also going to say it's a serializable field and a private int maximum steps. So this is are the amount of steps we can do within one frame. Um, this is kind of not entirely true how many steps it is, but it just it's very roughly. We don't want to um, spend too much resources on calculating the exact amount of steps. It is just to make sure that the PC doesn't uh, use too many resources at once and you get an error, uh, a stack overflow and you don't want that. So to keep track of which step you're currently at inside one cycle, we got a private int counter. Then we also, what we can do, and it's if you want your camera to keep track of the position where it is, so the position where it's currently removing the walls, that you're just, uh, that's that in the middle of the screen, like uh, in the demo, we can just do it with a public transform and we can just uh, assign it right here, that's the target for, the actual camera but you need a few more scripts to actually move the camera around and we're not going to create that in this tutorial but we've got another tutorial of it and it will just appear right now in the right corner of the screen and uh, we're going to call this the target and now what we are going to do is we can have a difficulty and it's not like we're just going to create if the difficulty is zero that's just a straight line what we're going to do is we say how many pads are actually available what we're going to do is we're going to have a difficulty and it's um, a float and it's in between zero and one and we're just going to say at the end we're just going to remove a random amount of walls so of course i know a lot of people are not going to use it because they just want one exit and one path but maybe because you are creating a game where multiple pets is a little bit more useful, you can just add that right here and it will just remove a certain percentage of all the walls that are still left inside the game. So again, this is a range to make sure that it isn't too much because otherwise we've got errors and the range is between zero and one. Then here we got a pub private float difficulty and um, it depends on if you want to create this like in a fancy um, way uh, for example with UE that a player itself can actually change the difficulty you need to create um, you need to make this public so you can set it but that's a whole different tutorial and in the end the last one is a private text and this text is the explanation text. So this is text we just uh, change text every time from. So uh, the only thing we're going to do today is actually the cre creation of the function of set all walls. And that's something we're going to do almost at the start. And 
we come to do a little bit more with this function. Actually, the only thing it will do is just make sure that the whole crit is there. So, we got a little bit of a problem because we're using one prefab. We, but we've got two different rotations and we also got like the border. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a factor three and it's a rotation. And this in Euler angles, so we can just understand it exactly. And it is 90 degrees rotated. We also got an int offset. And that's because um, when you have certain rotations, you actually want to make sure that you've got a little bit of an offset because otherwise um, it's just not looking right. You will get um, rotations that are just a little bit off. So we have a for loop, and the for loop will go through the size.x, so how uh, big it is, multiplied by 2. Because actually every um, position, so uh, it's just a space of two by two. The reason we do that is that you can just maneuver a little bit more easy inside it, and we're going to say plus one. Then every time we do this, we just want to have the rotation plus, and that's the reason why we do other angles and not directly a rotation. So we can just use this plus function that we can just add directly. 90 degrees towards it. Then what we are going to do, very sorry, I just deleted something. Um, then what we're going to do is set the offset and we're actually going to do here like a little bit of an if statement. And we just do it in one line and the way we do going to do it is by setting here rotation.i if it is divided by 180 and if that is zero. So it actually you just show what is left of this. Um, is there, uh, what's the value that after defining it, what's left? Well, if it is zero, we are going to say the offset is one and otherwise we're going to say the offset is zero. So this is just that little bit of offset to just make sure that once it is 180 degrees rotated, it will still be on the same line. Then we are actually doing an, another for loop of the y value and it's just the size dot i multiplied by 2. Then um, instead of actually using here the plus plus, we are actually adding every frame 2. So here we did every frame because um, sometimes first you do the horizontal uh, wall and then you do the vertical wall. And here we actually just need to do it. Um, here we got to choose between those and that's why we change that rotation every time. But here we just have to add all those lines in that particular order. So we actually don't really care about uh, adding it every time, adding it uh, every position. So here we are going to add a new wall. So came object, new wall, and that is the same as instantiate the wall prefab with a new factor tree of E. So that was the X value minus one, zero. So we can just keep it um, well, on the normal value, you can of course uh, do here another number, but for this tutorial, we'll just keep it on zero. And this plus the offset minus one. Again, this is just a formula just so we can calculate this function. Um, I know it's probably a little bit weird now, but in the end, we just see what is going to happen, and then you probably will understand it. Um, quaternion dot Euler. So we actually just put this rotation that sometimes you want it to be horizontal and sometimes vertical. We just put that into a rotation. And in the end, we also say it is going to be the child of the maze generator. So once you just want to remove the whole maze from the level, 
you only have to remove the mail generator itself and anti children will be removed. In the end, we also need to keep track of all the walls that are, so walls.add new wall. So we kind of got a little bit of a problem and that's because we don't have one side of the maze. We have got all of the sides, but one side needs to be a little bit different. So we got rotation and we're just going to reset that towards the new factor three dot 90. Uh, just to make sure that it's always 90. So we don't have trouble with that. And then we're going to for loop with an int L. And we're going to say that L needs to be less than size dot x multiplied by two. And we're just going to add every time two. So we're just adding that other line and we do them actually exactly the same as we're doing here only we do just for the last line and we're just putting this in this for loop you will always get the problem that there is still like one line open and if we do it like this we don't have that problem so let's go towards adding the game object so game object new wall and that is going to be an instantiate and we're going to instantiate the wall prefix and again, it's a new factor three. So the L function is actually the um, the x value because we're actually just putting it in the x, and of course zero for the i value. And the set value is of course the size of i multiplied by two because we do everything multiplied by two um, minus one because um, we are the walls that are in between and we actually need to have that wall in between so that's why we're doing minus one minus one and minus one because the spots are like in the center and then what we're doing here right here is set the rotation and again we just make it two words we're just adding it as a child and then here we are actually adding it towards our list so we actually do the exact thing here only this is just the last line is what we did here. So I hope everything, you understand still everything. The last thing is actually not that hard. So remember about that available positions and things like that. Here we're just adding it towards the last, um, towards the available positions uh, list. So we just multiply the size by two. And we just add every time two because uh, those spaces are two by two then we are also going to change uh, this variable towards x and the reason we do that is because otherwise um, this value is the same as this one and it can cause some errors in some older versions of unity so just to make sure that for everyone this works we're just going to keep this as an x value then what we're going to do is actually uh, change here towards the i value and size dot i multiplied by two and again we just add every time two instead of one then here we are actually going to add it towards the available positions and that is just a new factor two of x and i so what we just did here is it's very simple just to so you guys understand it here we just make sure that we're just adding it and we can just add here one every time because we actually rotate it and if you see that on the crit you will understand it and in the end of the video i will just put like a crit where you just uh, understand this for loop a little bit more better here we got the uh, rotation we rotate it every time 90 degrees so we can just go one up here we just say that the offset um, is 1 or 0, it just depends on the pivot and because if you've got a rotation of 180 it will just have a slight offset and we just want to remove that and we just put it right here. So I really hope you guys liked it, if you did please leave a like or subscribe and I see you guys next time with the next part in this tutorial series. Bye!